Okay, so I'll call the meeting to order. And Dan, do you take roll? Uh, I I could, or you can go ahead and uh, just uh, well, you know, point out each of the finance and audit committee members. Okay. So um, I'm going to speak for you, Roger. So step right into when I if I misspeak. Uh, so we met um, to discuss the the work plan and, and where we'd like to go. And, and we concluded that most of the items on the prior work plan had, had generally been completed uh, with the installation of the open.gov software. And um, then the review of the CAFRA stays on the work plan. That's the regular routine item. And then the uh, review of the investment policy uh, stays. Um, we, we discussed, um, we got a lot of talent on the finance and audit committee. And so, uh, we would like to get more deeply involved, if I can put it that way, in the real financial activities of the city. And, and we thought a way to do that was somehow get involved in the budget process. Uh, I told Roger about 20 or 30 years ago I, when Mike Bedwell was city manager, I don't know how long ago, it goes a long time ago, they had a budget task force and I was on the budget task force. And the council asked the city department heads to make a presentation of their piece of the budget to the budget task force. And then we would collect our comments and pass them on to the, um, to the city council. So that, that was something I'm familiar with. And I think it, it worked well uh, because we could ask the questions that could um, offend voters, but it didn't matter because nobody was voting for us. <laughs> I can put it that way. Um, so we would like to, as the FIC, try and get more involved in the budget process. Um, and I think that might develop some enthusiasm that we has been lacking in the finance and audit committee. Um, so, so that Ron, uh, I apologize. Can I interject here for just a moment? Uh, sure. I uh, just wanted to, um, I neglected one of the things I um, just wanted to go ahead and mention for all of the members of the public. Um, this will be a, a teleconference meeting. So uh, uh, clearly available by Zoom. Um, any members of the public who wish to speak on an item, please go ahead and use the raise hand feature um, or put your comment into the chat window. Um, I will be keeping an eye on the chat window. Um, Finance and Audit Committee members will remain on the screen during the duration of the meeting. So they'll be able to um, speak uh, during the meeting. And then, um, so we have, uh, Ron has already called it to order. Um, I think we have the, do we handle the roll call or should we do each of the members present? I think we've got the names, so we should be good. Um, and then we are on regular business item number one. So I, uh, I think the product of the meeting will be a, uh, a work plan that we agree on that will be presented to the city council at their August 25th meeting. Is that correct, Dan? That's correct, that's the target. So, um, so that, that's the goal of, of the meeting to get that uh, work plan prepared. Um, Roger, did I leave anything out from our meeting? Well, just to add a little color to that, um, I, mean, I, I see that it, this uh, committee started out uh, when I joined it. I think its main objective was really uh, to facilitate communication uh, and make the information available and, and, and accessible. And we think OpenGov has really kind of accomplished most of that. Just looking at the work plan, all the stuff we were trying to do. So I'm hoping we can expand our mandate a little bit um, and provide uh, a little bit more of a liaison to the public on providing input, especially on some of the budget items and then on, on the audit reports. And in order to do that, um, this will go into the work plan, but timing is going to be important, you know, be, being able to, to see some of these items early on in the process, uh, I think will be a more, more important than it probably has been in the past. Ron, are you able to share a screen and put the work plan on a screen that we can work from? Or is anyone able to do that? Maybe Dan, you can. You're, you're talking to a, a, a technical <laughs> deficient guy. 
Maybe Dan would It'd be, would it'd be nice if we that. could look at it while we talk about it. Ah, hey, there you go. There we are, genius at work. So um, let me know, I can zoom in a little bit. I'm not sure what yeah, the best, good. okay. That works for Zoom. So yeah, that's great. Okay, so um, just by way of uh, just orientation for not only the Finance and Audit Committee, but also members of the public, um, this is the, what's on screen now, um, largely encompasses the, uh, or most of what's on here is uh, the work plan that was approved by City Council for the Finance and Audit Committee for the last fiscal year. Um, there are a couple items that um, I'm happy to go over if you would prefer that, but um, just give me your direction on how you would like to approach this. Um, and then there are, are a couple other tabs that um, were my attempt to help structure the uh, conversation, but again, it is very much uh, the Finance and Audit Committee's work plan to develop for recommendation to the City Council. Okay, so the ongoing items, will, I think, would stay unless anybody wants to take them off. Well, that's our assignment. I think that has to stay. Uh, then um, the previous work plan items would, one is the research and recommend tools for council's use in financial decision making and, and then the review of, of public documents. That um, we thought was not completed, but made great progress with open.gov. So uh, Dan, as I suggested that if you give us a report on where we are in open.gov in terms of of the installation of the system and what we have left to do or what you have left to do. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so uh, for those of you who are able to follow the budget process, it was uh, rather a different budget process this year and not just because we were changing the budget development software. Um, it was of course a, a very difficult budget process due primarily to the pandemic, not only from the effects on uh, staying at home, so no longer being in the office, being in the council chambers, but also the financial effects of the pandemic on uh, the city's anticipated revenues. So that affected the last fiscal year, that, which just ended on June 30th, and the fiscal year that we're currently in. Um, that said, uh, we started and largely completed the migration to OpenGov for budget development. Um, so that allowed the platform to be used for not only the uh, narrative, which are shown as the stories if you go to the transparency portal on the, the city's page, um, but also the reports. So these reports uh, are dynamic. Um, they allow uh, members of the community to uh, view the things that they want to view. So we showed many of the similar views in the, the reports that have been shown in the published budget documents of the past. Um, but the, the great thing about the dynamic reports is that they really allow users to drill down into them. Um, they can see things on the very lowest levels. So if they wanted to, for instance, see how much is being spent on direct salaries in the police department, in the patrol division, they can drill down and see that particular line item. Or if they just want to see what the general fund is spending, they can also see that. Um, so much of that implementation is currently or has was completed um, and was completed ahead of the budget adoption. Um, there are a number of things that are still yet to be complete and are in progress. Um, some of those are uh, really just filling out the rest of the items which are typically included in a budget, um, which you know some of them are just publishing the docu the uh, enabling resolutions that go with the budget. So. Um, what those resolutions actually said and including those in that, um, the appropriations limit, for instance, some of those things that are typically included, um, a little bit of update for the uh, city manager's transmittal letter for the adopted budget. Um, and then re really just working on making all of that available on the OpenGov platform. So those are some of the things that we're working on. Um, some things that are still very much to do, um, things that we have open are, uh, helping the community understand uh, how to navigate the platform. So it is very different than opening a budget document and just being able to flip page by page through, you know, 250 or so odd budget uh, discussions and charts and whatnot. Um, and being able to help them understand, you know, going back to that uh, previous discussion about if you wanted to see what the police salaries and patrol are, how do you get to that? How do you uh, drill down and see that um, and how, how to navigate that? So, so we're, we're very much working on that. Um, that would be one area that the Finance and Audit Committee I think would be uh, very valuable. Um, we did have one volunteer from the community who helped us out and offered some perspective, which we are incorporating, but um, that's, that's certainly an area that the Finance and Audit Committee could help with. 
Um, another piece is the report order. So, you know, we put them up in what we believed was a reasonably um, approachable order. So I think that the first thing that people see when they uh, open up the reports in the transparency portal is the authorized staffing levels. Um, and so those can be looked at by department, um, citywide, uh, by division within department. Um, and then it goes into revenues and then expenditures and sort of works through uh, much of the progression of how the budget is uh, presented in the more narrative form. Um, but we are still working on how to best present those, you know, how many views uh, to present to the public, what should be shown in those views is, are bar charts better than line charts, are pie charts better than bar charts, that type of thing, and for which types of them. So, so that's one area that we're working on and could very much use the Finance and Audit Committee's help. Um, one other sort of ancillary piece to that is that uh, we are completing integration with the city's financial accounting software. Um, so while the budget was developed, so while the spending plan was developed on OpenGov, uh, the actual uh, amount that has been spent at even any given time is not yet available on the transparency portal. So um, we are still working on that. That is should be done uh, in the next few weeks, I believe. Um, and so at that point, we will be able to have budget to actual reports that are updated on a daily basis. So um, those, those are coming um, and we will uh, also look forward to, to feedback from the Finance and Audit Committee and helping us to uh, convey that information to the community in a way that helps them understand what is available there. Um, the other sort of pieces of OpenGov and what has been uh, implemented are stories. Um, so as I mentioned before, previously the budget was a document, 250 or so pages where, you know, you would start with a transmittal letter that sort of gave an overview and then you would work into some different components of the budget, you know, how the budget was developed, what the general fund is up to, what other funds are up to, and then ending with the CIP. Um, given the web format of OpenGov, uh, those were individual story pages, so sort of uh, sections taken out of the budget and displayed similarly, but not exactly the same given that you, you know, it's not exactly the same as flipping one page to the next if you can really flip around much easier uh, given the, the web format of it. So um, how those are presented, um, whether there's the correct amount of context, uh, whether the links are, are, you know, whether we embed a report or just link to a report, those are the types of things that we're still working on polishing. Um, and again, the Finance and Audit Committee could very much give us useful feedback on how to do that better and, and make it approachable for the community. Um, and then sort of the last piece is there is a lot of functionality available through OpenGov for non-financial reports. Um, so I talked about authorized staffing as one. Another one that is available in the budget uh, as published right now is the workload indicators. So that is, those are essentially uh, the particular areas that the uh, departments and divisions um, spend much of their energy throughout the year and sort of indicate what they have been up to. Um, but there's very much, there, there's a lot of possibility for other types of non-financial reports. Um, and to the extent that, uh, to the extent that some data can be uh, collected in a structured manna, manner and presented in a uh, presentation format, that's the type of thing that we can uh, include through OpenGov. And so, you know, I don't necessarily know what all of those are, um, but I think that those are, are things that we can continue to work on implementing and that the Finance and Audit Committee would be very valuable in saying, you know, this is a type of report that we would uh, like to see. So I, I think that that's uh, sort of what we've been working on in OpenGov, sort of the things that are still, uh, some of the, other one, the things that we've accomplished so far and some of the things that are still pending and will be upcoming in the next uh, couple of weeks. So happy to take any questions. Um, Ron, did that more or less answer your question? Yeah, thank you. I was going to ask if there are any questions. Yeah, I, um, in, in terms of um, the, the Finance Committee um, look, looking at all these items with regard to, you know, how, how, how uh, usable it is and whether it meets the, the needs of the community, um, it, are, there, are there going to be any kind of um, 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 tutorials or anything else that, that helps people get, get a grasp of all of this? Yeah, I think that that's one of the things that we would really, we would really look to the audit of the finance and audit committee to help us develop, you know, it, oh, as yeah. you, you know, click on the transparency portal, what questions do you have? What, what questions could we answer? How could we better, um, 
orient people to what they're looking at in a way that makes it so that they can find the information that they're looking for. But that's absolutely something that we intend to incorporate. Um, and as I mentioned, there was one uh, member of the community who volunteered and uh, sort of wrote up their uh, perspective on how to use OpenGov and recommendations. And you know, I, I think that one thing that we could do is sort of crowdsource some of that from the community and say, what, what questions do you have? How would you like to use your budget? Um, but that is absolutely something that we intend to do is, is that, uh, that sort of navigation and how to guide for the community. So but basically for, for us, the first step would be to just go in and kick the tires and uh, you know, we spend a lot of time figuring out what, what uh, is helpful, what's not helpful, if there's anything we'd like to see different or if it's, if it's merely a, a question of educating everybody as to how to use what's already there. I think that's a perfect characterization, yes. Okay. Uh, I, have, I have a question, Dan. Um, I would assume OpenGov has some kind of tutorials and this kind of information. I mean, it's pretty standard for software companies to have that. Uh, you know, it's actually kind of surprising uh, that they, you know, I think that people use it so differently depending on uh, what their particular needs are in terms of how they present a lot of the, you know, sort of similar but not exactly the same types of things that if you, if they created a laundry list of everything, I, I don't know that it would necessarily be approachable because it would be uh, so in depth, there would be so many options and not all of them would apply to everyone. So I, I think that they do have some of those, but I, I think that it may be more valuable to just have a, at the very least, a, you know, a, a five bullet point approach or something uh, for the city of Menlo Park in particular. Okay, so, but we've looked at their tutorials or any, you know, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I do this and I, I would, my customers would hate me if I didn't have some kind of a navigation tutorial. So l let me see if I can, if I can find one. Um, it's, this is one of the things that uh, is a little bit different or difficult from my perspective, um, you know, working through it on a regular basis. My, my perspective of what's there is very much different from someone who might look at it a few times a year. Um, and so I, uh, let, let me see what is available for the customer perspective rather than the sort of practitioner perspective. And I can send that out to the finance uh, committee. Okay, thanks. So to, maybe it's too early to sum up, but to sum up this item, it would be open.gov is well on its way. Staff would like our help in completion, uh, particularly as it relates to educating the public on how to use it. And so that should remain or should be on our work plan. And then the question for the committee is, how are we gonna do that? Do we appoint a subcommittee? Um, I mean, before the pandemic, uh, you know, we, we, you gave us a demonstration in the, in the conference room so we could go through it and see how it all worked. We can't sort of do that now, can we? Oh, we can do it on we can do it online if, if you want to but but for tonight's meeting i think we just want to figure out what the work plan is and i think we would have a you know kind of a general topic of review of opengov.com um, and we have under staff updates a pretty good roadmap of what it is we want to take a look at and comment on don't you think yeah uh, anyone else have any thoughts no, I'll, I'll second. I think that's a good idea just to add a, a task. Okay. In fact, I'd replace number one on your previous work plan with. Yes. With, with what one under staff update says. <laughs> Open.gov. So you replace item research and recommend tools? Yeah, because we've got a tool now. So yeah. Open.gov. So now I think our mission is probably to see how we can make that work as well as it can and make it better. I'll, I'll just, I'll flip over and, and add this to, I created a second tab where we can sort of, uh, or where the finance and audit committee can compile uh, the recommendations or ideas. So I'll okay. um, put uh, maybe open gov support to be kind of open-ended um, for enough. the, yeah, and, and you can put training. 
you know, for, or uh, Citizen Cherini, maybe. I don't know. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Okay, is everybody happy with that? Yep. Um, I had a question. I don't know if we're getting onto this, but I had a question on the previous work plan items. Um, I saw that on the 2019-2020 uh, item 2C had been struck through, but it's still on the 2020 to 2021. I was wondering what was going on there. This That's is an annual report and we used to look at it and say, okay, we like it. Um, okay. So th this one was the, the popular annual financial report is essentially the budget and brief for the CAFR. Um, it was intended to be sort of a condensed version of the annual financial reports. Uh, we did not end up having the staff capacity to prepare that um, as a new document. And so that's why it was uh, struck. So I, I wanted to include it so that there was nothing uh, intentionally omitted um, from the previous year's work plan, uh, just for reference sake. But that was the reason that it was struck on the most recent update in February. And should it be, should it be labeled as 2018 to 2029? Nope, you are correct. That that should be 2018-19. Not not. What, why is it not rolling over to uh, a later year in, in the current one? Um, so this was just a, a historical perspective of what the Finance and Audit Committee worked on last year. Um, if the Finance and Audit Committee uh, desired to update these, uh, it would be appropriate probably to update them to the. Uh, matching fiscal years, but this was for the last year's work plan, which would have been focused on the 1819 PAFR. Okay, thank you. Uh, the, uh, I don't know how you wanted these ordered, Dan, but the, the next item that sort of followed this, in my view, would be you um, wanted us to help push for um, a refresh of the general ledger system or a new general ledger system because the one you're using is uh, ancient, uh, inefficient. Um, and there's money that's been set aside, I think, in the CIP for data processing up and you're not, let me see, how should I say it? You haven't been told or advised to do it. Uh, so, so this is, I, I mean, so I, I did want to uh, just update the Finance and Audit Committee that this is one of the stash, staff initiatives that we're working on is updating our financial accounting software, so our general ledger and our accounts payable software. Um, as you pointed out, the one that we have is extremely old. Um, it is very much a legacy system at this point. Um, and just, uh, you know, look, ensure that the Finance and Audit Committee knows that that's what we're working on. Um, and to the extent that the Finance and Audit Committee wants to engage with that, um, you know, th there are more CPAs on the Finance and Audit Committee than I think work for the City of Menlo Park. So um, using that, uh, I think would be, you know, it, a, an intelligent use of resources that are already there in an advisory capacity. Um, so that is that is something that we're we are working on. Um, we are in the evaluation stage of some um, some potential software upgrades. Um, and as you pointed out, there is money in the IT master plan, which is in the capital improvement plan. Um, this was one of the things that was identified as uh, something that needed to be upgraded, similar to the budget software. And I think you mentioned to me with a lot of you working at home, it's even more inefficient. Uh, from an access point of view, is that correct? Yeah, so one, one of the, you know, an older legacy software is sort of going to be um, potentially less attractive than, you know, some newer systems simply because uh, some of the functionality might not have completely kept up. Um, that's, that's certainly the case with our software. It hasn't been upgraded to the most current version. Um, so it is a little bit behind, but uh, as you pointed out, working from home provides even a new wrinkle in things. Um, you know, when everyone was on site at 
City Hall, it wasn't a big deal to have a server on premises at City Hall that everybody logged into. Um, but with everybody remote, it does create a little bit of uh, additional complication in getting the actual work done. Um, one of the things that we found using OpenGov was that it was incredibly uh, valuable to have a cloud-based solution that allowed everybody to work on things essentially at the same time um, and with no constraints about you know routing through city servers and uh, those types of things so um, that, that is one of the things that I would get I would say we uh, that staff uh, would recommend is that we pursue a cloud-based solution um, it, that is new since uh, stay-at-home order and working uh, remotely, again, given that uh, we have seen such big advances with OpenGov compared to previous budget softwares, um, and because we don't anticipate that we will all be back in the office in the very near future, and that you know, a cloud-based solution doesn't function any less, uh, any, it's not any worse in the office than from home. So it, there's no impairment by being in the office, but there is an advantage if you're not. So what's the committee's thoughts on, uh, I guess, making that an item of uh, what we would say we support? Uh, up, updating the general ledger package? I don't know if that's a work plan item now, is it? You know, I'm, I'm kind of sensitive to the idea that we should just pick a few really important things to focus on, but. Okay. Um, so I guess Roger would say you have our support, but it's not on the plan because you know you got it. <laughs> um, and another um, item that that we spent a lot of time on is the 3A, is the capital improvement plan. And I know uh, Roger, and you spent a lot of time on this and have a subcommittee report. And um, so what, why don't, I, I mean, I think this has been a hot item for a while and, and we haven't seen much, our input been uh, accepted, if I can put it that way, or uh, put in play. So uh, what, why don't you talk about how you would like that on the work plan? Is that directed at me? Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, that, that should be item number two on the work plan. Um, it's probably one of the places we can, we can add the most value in terms of communication and accessibility. Um, uh, just at a high level, we don't have to get into the detail of it today, but it took me forever just to figure out, you know, what the CAFR was and what the projects were, and it's all in the report. Uh, but I think that ought to be a priority item for us. Um, and it makes sense. I mean, you know, there's it's one of the most important things people want to know about the finances of their city is where their money's going and what the projects are and what the state of the projects, et cetera, and, and how to find this information. So I would say I would move, I would turn number, um, where is it? Capital, let's, the CAFR, uh, 2B should probably be number two. You're talking about the CAFR, right? Actually, well, you know, no, the capital, I'm talking about the, the, uh, the um, report capital you improvement plan. on, on yeah. the uh, yeah, capital improvement plan. Yeah, so, so 3A would probably make item number two. Yes. And on this, um, how would you characterize the uh, maybe outcome of it? Is it the organization or communication? Um, so what would a success look like? Um, yeah, I think it would be to improve, um, um, what's a good way of phrasing it? I mean, just, just improve the delivery of information, improve accessibility is kind of how I think about it. <clears throat> Someone feel free to help me out here, but you get the idea. Well, one of the issues we had was on the uh, budget. Uh, the budget would list, generally speaking, this year's capital improvement expenditures. Uh, 
And, and we suggested that this year is not necessarily the most important. So we need a kind of, if we start a capital improvement project expenses this year, how does that relate to the expenses we're gonna incur, incur in future years? How does, um, uh, and, and as things change, how, how do you change or notify people to change of the priority for the capital improvement items? Um, so, so and, and how do these sort of interrelate if they do? For example, on, on uh, the library, there was a, um, that was a big capital improvement item that, you know, it's kind of fell by the wayside because it was $50 million to replace it. Uh, essentially a, a running library, a working library. Uh, and uh, so am I making myself clear, Roger? It's, it's Well, it, yeah, it's a, I mean, it's information basically. Yeah. What you're talking about. Okay, and, and, and a report was issued on February 24th. So, um, anyway. so the CIP is, uh, is would be the second item. Yeah. I, I think the th a third item that we've all been fussing with or thinking about is the unfunded pension liability. And um, we do have a meeting scheduled August 20th with the actuaries and there's a, a, uh, an, uh, they have a, a system where you can go in and as an example, change the investment returns and so on and so forth to see what that does to the unfunded liability. And, and Sean and I were going to go to that meeting and I think Roger wanted to. Mm -hmm. And if as anybody else who would like to go, we'd have to change it to a special meeting rather than just a subcommittee meeting if there's uh, four or more, is it, no, if, if four want to go, if one more person wants to attend, then we just have a special meeting. So um, to me, it's kind of interesting to see this system. And, uh, and we have, uh, Sean had a bunch of questions on the administration of the plan. As an example, if somebody it works for Menlo Park, and then they leave and go work for another city or somebody else in Calpers. Uh, what does that do to our unfunded liability? Are we still responsible for that unfunded part? Or does it go somewhere else? So he had a number of administrative issues that, that he was curious about, uh, because I think our goal is to get a, a real uh, good, good reading on what the unfunded balance is and how do you fund it. I left everybody speechless. So it, it looked like Sean dropped off for just a second there. Sean, uh, it looked like you jumped right back on. Was uh, oh. Were you able to mostly hear that? And since you were on the previous subcommittee, it, it might not have been much of a, a loss. I just want to make sure we didn't lose anything there. Well, I uh, I, I, I don't know what happened, but uh, the, the Zoom screen just came up and the, the little hourglass was going around for a little bit. So um, I... I, I assume we're talking about this presentation that's coming up in a couple of weeks time. Is that right? Yeah. So there's the presentation and would anybody else, there's three that would like to attend myself, you and Roger. And if there's anyone else who wants to attend, we can do that, but we'll have to call a special meeting because of the Brown Act, which is not a big issue for us. It is for Dan. He's got it right all up down. But, um, so, uh, the actuary was going to make a presentation, show us the the, uh, the system, how it works, uh, how we can you know get balances based on different information, such as you know a change in the um, funding levels or the investment income, and how that's going to affect the unfunded balance. And then our our goal, I think, is to make the council aware of what the real number is so they will, can be able to figure out how to fund it. And this has been a while since we've talked about this. Uh, Dan, can you refresh my memory? Um, is this going to be an interactive 
meeting? Are we going to be able to ask whatever questions we want, or do we have to provide them in, in advance? How is it going to work? Uh, so this will be a meeting with um, GovInvest, which is a company that the city contracts with to sort of understand the pension liabilities and what uh, actions the city takes and how they affect pension liability. Um, so they have, as part of that agreement, um, they have actuarial consultants who are available to discuss whatever uh, whatever questions are out there. Um, so. For, for the Finance and Audit Committee, um, the, it was originally set up with the subcommittee, um, and the idea was just to have uh, any questions that that were out there answered by profession, professional actuaries. So it will be interactive. Uh, it will be a professional actuary on the line answering the questions. Um, they can be available ahead of time or any follow-up questions or any questions that come up during that meeting, all of that is fair game. Um, I would point out that uh, given, you know, given the complexity of some of this, it would probably be helpful to have some of those in advance, but there's no, there's no restriction on what questions can be asked of them. Well, I recall that the, the initial thought, and maybe I'm wrong on this, but I thought the initial thought was that we would actually be able to get a hands-on with the system uh, to be able to see you know, directly what's available and what's not available. Um, and then to be able to ask questions, but that doesn't seem to be the case. So well, I, I think that was was the case. I'm hoping that's the case because we put off our, our subcommittee meetings until this uh, this uh, program was, was installed and use it, and able to use it so that we could kind of as we just have have the actuary show us how it works and then ask what happens if you put in 5% investment income versus seven or what happens to the unfunded liability. So I, I can clarify and see whether I, I'm, I'm not certain um, their relationship with the actual software, but it, it is the same company. So I would be surprised if they didn't have it available to use and basically run through scenarios and say, you know, this is the, the CalPERS uh, discount rate as they've uh, calculated it. And, you know, if in my professional actuarial opinion, it's a quarter of a point too high or a quarter of a point too low, uh, provide the reasoning behind that and then show what that difference would do to the overall uh, pension liability at any given point in time using the software. Well, um, Ron, I would suggest that you and I um, have a separate Zoom call or a phone call and uh, sync up on what we want to get out of this meeting, what questions we want to have answered. Okay. That makes sense? Yeah, that's, that's fine, yeah. So just uh, for for my purposes, as I prepare the, the staff report of the um, Finance and Audit Committee, um, the, the work plan. So this one was, uh, it was previously on the work plan. There was a subcommittee. Um, Ron, as you pointed out, there uh, are as many as three Finance and Audit Committee members who can attend a subcommittee meeting without violating the Brown Act. Um, I am not certain. So we don't have to just, or the, the Finance and Audit Committee does not have to decide subcommittees right now. I do just want to make uh, the distinction that, or just reiterate that point that if uh, there is a desire for more than three members to participate, um, that will need to be scheduled as a, a special meeting. And that's next, it's currently scheduled for next Thursday at 3.30 in the afternoon. So just to, to keep those logistics in mind. Well, in terms of Ron and I um, talking about things before then, um, I, I would, certainly wasn't trying to exclude uh, Roger if uh, he wants to be involved in that part of it as well. I was just going by what the subcommittee had previously been. And that's guys, totally totally acceptable and fits within uh, all the requirements. Guys can go ahead. Um, I think you'll be the subcommittee, you too. <laughs> okay. Well, Roger, you were interested in going to meet. Now, I think Tal has some real experience in pensions too. So um, I wouldn't want to exclude him. Well, if, if somebody else wants to take my place, I'm happy to. Yeah, well, well you just to... wanted to go to see the, just watch the action. You didn't necessarily want to be part of the subcommittee, I thought, Roger. That's right, that's right. Well, why don't you ask if, if there's somebody else? 
So yeah, I, uh, Ron, I would like to join that meeting next week, if at all okay. possible. Okay, so why don't you come, Roger? Uh, why don't you yeah. paint, your, paint your background on the... <laughs> all right. Okay. So Tao, you're, you're included and... Uh, yeah. And then, Sean, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll email you tomorrow to see if we can set up a time. Okay. Yeah, and, and in the meantime, I, it's been a while. I'll go back over the information that we came up with previously. Okay. So is pension liability communication uh, an accurate uh, characterization of this uh, idea to be considered? Um, I guess you can put that, I mean, to me, it's really a computation of what it, what's a realistic number, because I don't think, as we've said before, or I said before, I don't think a seven and a quarter percent return is realistic, especially when it's only funded 70%. The liability is only funded 70%. So, I mean, those are the kind of things I'd like to ask the actuary. So it's a review he, as well. I don't know if he has any any views or opinions on what the current investment return is going to be, because I'm sure it's going to crash. Uh, so actually, just on, on that note, for the previous fiscal year, the preliminary returns from CalPERS are 4.7%. Um, so yeah, it didn't meet the, the discount rate for that year, but it wasn't uh, quite as dire as might have been expected in February or March. Yeah, but that... When you say the previous year, is that June 30th, 19, uh, 20 or 19? 20. That's remarkably good, <laughs> I would think. <laughs> well, haven't they been investing in some higher risk uh, um, areas? I think they sold their Puerto Rican housing bonds. Hmm. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> okay, so... Um, so are there any other uh, projects that uh, anyone has that they would like to put on the uh, on the list? I have one to discuss and I'm open to getting feedback. Um, one of the things I talked about in is somewhat of a benchmark against other similar towns, cities, um, and the reason I bring this up and Dan might be able to explain if that's, that could be already done, it could be easily available on open gov. I, I don't know what access we have to other open gov, you know, users, but the reason I bring it up is I occasionally get these emails from people in the community and, you know, they're talking about, oh, we overspend on this, you know, police or we, don't manage this right. And I was, I'm really wondering if that would be a value. I mean, you don't want to do a benchmark if it's not a value to the council and to, you know, the people like Dan, but it's a form of, you know, benchmarking audit of how we do against other communities. And I could include where we are on things like unfunded pension, you know, just to give perspective. Uh, so, so to, if I might, uh, to answer that question, uh, there are a, a huge number of other open gov users. So in terms of like direct comparability, uh, or at least familiarity with the interface, that's certainly available. There are always nuances depending on the organization based on how they structure their chart of accounts, for instance. So, you know, what, what we have in the chart of accounts, you might not find in Palo Alto. Right, um, right. But, you know, using two, two different agencies that use open gov, at least it will look similar and you know be able it will operate similarly um, but i think that i i guess my my professional opinion is that context is hugely important um, and so uh, I, I think that this falls in the realm of you know potentially the non-financial data that could be expressed through open gov is sort of a uh, you know it's structured data can be expressed graphically um, certainly something that could be added um, and something that is it is certainly available. It is not something, it is something that I think it would require some 
uh, help from the Finance and Audit Committee to sort of you know, do some of that work and ex determine how to express that. But I, I could certainly see the value of adding that context to uh, what yeah, information we, is available to the community. We, we, I mean, we could start with a high level or some level of resolution, you know, on the benchmarking, like, but and come out with a report against a, just a few cities. But the key is, would it be, you know, from your opinion, is it of value to anybody? You don't want to do that if it's, you know, nobody cares. So I, I guess I, I would I would send that back to you um, and say that you you are the member you are a member of the community and the fact that these emails caught your attention indicates that uh, somebody cares somebody cares enough to send the email you cared right. enough to read the email so um, you you are sort of the experts in the community who can identify those things that matter to the community and help um, that may need additional explanation. And I really think that that's one of the core roles of the finance audit committee. So, um, okay. But the first question if, is, if that it answer. doesn't exist now, you don't do it as part of your job. Okay. So, so it's not out there. And when these questions come up, I mean, I'd use unfunded pension as a, as an example is, you know, maybe we can find an average for commute, you know, cities our size, and then pick a few local representative cities and say, okay, how much is their liability or their unfunded pension? Um, you know, how much do we spend on police versus our total budget? Things like that. Uh, so anyway, that's the idea, is a, a benchmark audit of, you know, s different cities that are representative of our size. I, uh, yeah, I, I like that. I just don't want to have too many things. On that. No, uh, I know. I, I know. And, and it's all a matter of scale, right? How, how deep you go. And I, I think if we started it, you know, you start at a higher level and if people like it, if they don't, then you decide what to do with it. We could certainly put a subcommittee together to uh, investigate. Yeah, and I, I'd be willing to head that up. Okay. Like, I've done a lot of benchmarking for companies and, you know, that's where the idea comes from. Let me write down that you volunteered. <laughs> <laughs> it's public and then my face is still up there. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. I actually, that, that's fascinating to me. I'd like to. <laughs> well, and we want to get feedback from the council and from staff okay. to see if there are areas that they would like, you know, that would find useful as well. Yeah, it, I think that's the tricky part because um, in, in the sewer, uh, sewer district, West Bay, we're part, they're part of a, um, a joint powers authority that provides workers compensation coverage and they spend a lot of money on um, uh, risk management right and and the, the way i used to measure how how well are we doing is the rates they would charge are half of what the state fund would charge so you know you had a pretty good idea that was pretty effective but that's a simple one you know yeah, but like I say, I get you probably get everybody probably gets some of these emails. I have no idea if these people are, you know, have a have a a good piece of information or if it's warranted their concern yeah. or anything. Lee DeBoke sends Lee DeBoke sends that out all the time. Right. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the one. But yeah. <laughs> But, but you know, it, there's no response. We couldn't. We can't. Po you can't point them to yeah. a. Yeah. you know, a benchmarking PDF report and say, you know, that's reasonable. And she's pretty, I think she's pretty thoughtful. Yeah, and, and yeah. It, but I'm just, anyway, that's it for now. Yeah. I, I don't want to okay. solve the problem. I just want to know if that's a problem that- Is there anyone who's not interested in that? You're on the list. <laughs> okay, there you go. So, um, is there anything else? I think most everything we've really 
kind of covered on the on the approved projects from last time. Um, let's maybe go over the parking lot items and see if there's anybody if there's any interest in any of those. Um, sale of assets. I still think we ought to sell the water department, but I'm uh, tuning up the. I'm not getting any traction on yeah, that. Yeah, I think I heard you mention that once before. <laughs> uh, review of utility users tax cap. That uh, that was a prior member of the committee was just interested in why, I guess, are we um, capping the utility tax for certain large companies? And she want, I think she wanted a list of what those were, and I don't that was just mentioned we didn't do any work. So uh, the library financing, I think that's sort of dead in the sense that that was the $50 million bond that we were asked to review at a special meeting. And um, uh, is there anything on that, um, on that uh, parking lot list that anybody rings anybody's bell? Hearing none, I presume there is none. Do, do you mean in terms of that it should be taken off the parking lot list or if it should be promoted from that parking lot? Uh, well, I, I guess I don't see anything the purpose of the parking lot list is for maybe uh, council to say, we'd rather have you move the sale of assets up and to move the benchmarking down. Is that, that, that the purpose of that? There's no council in this year, so I can't. I, I think there was also a desire to um, keep a, a record of what things had been discussed um, or considered in the past. Okay. Well, this item of uh, multiple investment advisors, um, Seems to me that it's quite an, an important and relevant issue. I'm sorry, Tao, I didn't understand what you said. The, the, the item there almost at the bottom, the use of multiple investment advisors. Yeah, that was my thought that um, one of our clients has hundreds of millions of dollars in investments and they use three advisors. Yeah. And, and then, uh, and then, and then the one that does the worst does not get their three-year contract renewed and they, you know, bring, bring somebody else in. And so I thought if there was some competition, maybe the city would see uh, a higher investment return than they're getting. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, I think the issue came out that most of the money is invested in LIFE, which is a short-term vehicle, and they use one advisor and they're happy with them. So I, you know, uh, so that was how that got on there, and it didn't, uh, frankly, didn't get legs. Well, maybe we should spend a little bit more time on it. Okay. So, so do you just want to leave these things on for the parking lot list, or add anything? Yeah, and just to confirm, the we could add or move things up during the year. This is the right, or is is it flexible during the year, or it's once it's a presented to the council, it's set. Well, I think once it's presented, it's set, but it doesn't mean we can't re uh, review it and suggest a revised work plan. Is that okay. right, Dan? Yeah, so the, the that's purpose, correct. The purpose of this work plan is they don't want us to go half cock off half cock and and and, and uh, investigate some things that they don't know we're doing it. Right. Yeah, that's what I mean. So if we start reasonably small and something comes up, we can add it. Yeah. Get it. Get it. Yeah. Uh, so that's why yeah. I, I'm for a shorter list at this point. Yeah, and the and the mayor, um, the ex mayor, said I'd 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 like to have the. Uh, Finance committee just have two or three items they work on, and then when you finish one, take it off and put something else on. 
So the other, so your energy is more directed. Right. Okay. Is there anybody who wants to add anything to the parking lot items? Well, on the parking lot items, they, these are all items that are, for the time being, postponed. Is that correct? You're not working on these. Yeah, that, it, it, it kind of suggests that we're interested in looking at this city council. Uh, so, you know, if, if there's something that piques your interest, you would move that up and say, put this on your work plan. Okay. But for the time being, we are not uh, taking any on, of these items on. No. no. Okay. I mean, not, a, not as a committee, you can, you know, do it individually if you want. Um, yeah. I think we've completed our assignment. Is that right, Dan? Do you, are you comfortable with what we've done? So um, if I may make a suggestion, um, can we just review, or would the Finance and Audit Committee be interested in reviewing subcommittees? Um, I know there was sort of, there were one or two things that were talked about, but um, to the extent that uh, at least the items that are here as two, three, and four on the ideation, um, just uh, maybe go ahead and, and make the action that those would be the, the included subcommittees, of course, at the discretion of the council's okay. review uh, when, they, when they see it. And, yeah. and by way of, of full disclosure, even though I'm off the committee in April, I told Roger that I would stay to uh, be on a subcommittee because you can have people that are, aren't in the finance and audit committee. So if you want me, I can, I'll, I'd be more than happy to stay on the subcommittee. So open, so let's start with the easy one. The pension liability communication, that's uh, Sean, Tao and myself, right? Yeah. The cap capital improvement is Roger and who was the other person on that? Well, there was another per I, so I was, was originally on that, but somehow I got out of the loop on that. So wasn't there two people that wrote that? Sooty was on it. it yeah, Sooty, Sooty and I did it, but and we she's... can put Brian back on. Well, I'm gonna try to do the benchmark, but oh, if you need right. a third, I, I could, yes. Well, we only have one. We only have Roger, because uh, Sooty was the, the second one, is, is my recollection. All right, I'll, I'll be a second. I can do two. OK. Oh. And then on the comparative benchmarks, um, yeah, I, I would you're, be... you're there. Yeah. And, uh, and I said, I, I, I'm interested in that. You'll give me some help? Good. No, okay. no. <laughs> Yeah, you're taking charge. <laughs> uh, yeah, and we then, can do that. As long, and I'll kind of be a second. I'll let Royce take take the yeah. lead. Uh, he already has on the capital. Yeah, so. yeah, he's he, yeah. So on open open gov support and community training, um, who's interested in that? So it, it's also not required that. Uh, these act, these various items have a subcommittee um, to the extent that they would be better it's, it's, considered as a full committee. That's also totally yeah. Exciting. It's all that open doc gov is. I mean, so far along, I think maybe we just the subcommittees the whole or the whole. Yeah, keep or, keep that for the whole group. Yeah, that, that's a good one to keep. Okay. okay. Then. Uh, so then the, the last thing that would be required here is really um, to, to take an action to uh, and then take a formal vote to recommend this being the uh, Finance and Audit Committee's work plan to the City Council and then I could take it to them on the 25th. Yeah. Or, and, and then we can, I can share that recommendation from okay. the Finance and Audit Committee. Uh, Tao wrote a pretty interesting email about um, this list and and start dates and due dates and all that sort of thing. Do we want to look at that now or wait until the subcommittees get together and maybe develop their own game plan? I think a lot of it is actually uh, already included because you got a start date there, you got an end date there. Uh, and on the other page, you have the, uh, 
list of priorities. So I think a lot of it is already covered in here. Okay. Um, that was looking at the old document. So the new one, you go back then to the first page. You already got that covered there. Yeah, okay. that, so what you got all the reference number is really a priority number, is correct? Uh, I, I don't think that they were necessary. It was really more um, bundled by um, just the order that they made it on the list, but not necessarily by priority. So that's not a priority number. Okay. Oh, but these are the, the, the approved projects. I mean, Correct. These were for the previous work plan. Yeah. So uh, I, I hate to be the liaison that says they have to leave and cut a meeting short, but um, may I uh, make the recommendation that the start dates and end dates could be considered later um, once the um, work plan has been approved yeah, by I think that's the council? Yeah. yeah. Yes, let's do that. Okay. So then let's move to... So, so the, the last formal item, just so that we can... Uh, make sure that this is uh, sort of memorialized is um, we, we should have a, a motion and a second and a vote. Okay. Um, and Do so I have a motion to approve this? Yeah, I'll, I'll make the motion to approve the list, Brian Westcott. And I will second it. Okay, all in yeah. favor? Yeah. I, yes. Any, I, any opposed? None, no. any abstentions? None, good. So by acclamation. Uh, so, um, Dan, you're on now for the director's report. I think you've done most of it. <laughs> I, so everything that uh, I would have covered, um, uh, so in as uh, sort of filling in for Nick Figueres, the, the admin services director acting uh, just based on the, the changes in structure um, has been covered in the staff update portion of this. So there isn't anything that I think that staff would like to share in addition to that. Okay. Uh, and are there uh, any future agenda topics that a, a committee member would like or any committee member wants to make a report on anything? No. Okay. I think we got quite a bit completed. So thank you all very much. And I'll see some of you on the 24th, that is. That uh, 20th, I think is 20th. Right. Okay. So thank you very much. The meeting's adjourned. Thanks, everyone. Right. Thank Everybody you. Right. Scotch and water time. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. Take care. Thank you. <laughs>